Hello and welcome to the TI Precision Lab series on switches and multiplexers. In previous sessions, we discussed some key multiplexer parameters such as on resistance, on capacitance, and bandwidth. We also discussed the importance of these key parameters when we design systems involving the multiplexers. The goal of this next video is to understand the multiplexer's S parameters and how it affects the high speed signal performance. Before moving on to the S parameter model, you may ask why we need to use S parameters. Let's look at a typical USB Type-C application example. A channel with a USB 3 transmitter TX and a receiver RX matches the characteristic impedance within the channel. However, the output waveform at the connector is degraded compared to the input waveform. So why is the waveform at the connector output degraded? There are many methods to analyze electronic networks. Those methods, such as H, Y, and Z parameter sets best describe DC and low frequency circuits. At high frequency, X parameters are normally used for describing nonlinear high frequency circuits, and S parameters are preferred to characterize linear high frequency circuits, such as USB 3. Power, voltage, and current in an S parameter model can be considered as a wave traveling towards the port of the network, where they can then be measured directly by a network analyzer. Consider a two port network. When an incident wave A1 is applied to port 1, some portion of A1 will transmit through the network from port 1 to port 2, resulting in B2. Some portion of A1 will be reflected or scattered back through port 1, resulting in the reflected wave B1. So what is causing the scattering of the signal? The answer lies in the application of a scattering matrix, or S matrix. For an in-port network, it contains n by n S parameters. Each one represents a possible input-output path. S parameters are named with a capital S followed by a pair of subscripts, X and Y. The first number X represents the output port, and the second number Y is the input port where the signal is applied. S parameters are complex values, having real and imaginary parts, or magnitude and phase parts in the frequency domain. When a complex time-varying signal is passed through a linear network, the amplitude and phase shifts can dramatically distort the time domain waveform. Therefore, both amplitude and phase information in the frequency domain are important for high frequency device characterization. In a two port network, there are four S parameters S11, S12, S21, and S22. When the input incident wave A1 is reflected back as B1 at the port 1, this parameter is called S11. S11 is determined by measuring the magnitude and phase of the incident signal, A1, and the reflected signal, B1, while the output port 2 is terminated with the characteristic impedance of Z0. This condition guarantees that A2 is zero since there is no reflection from an ideal load. S11 is equivalent to the input reflection coefficient. When the input incident wave A2 is reflected back as B2 at port 2, this is called S22. It can be measured with the same way as S11 by terminating port 1 with the characteristic impedance of Z0. Z22 is equivalent to the output reflection coefficient. When the input wave A1 is transmitted from port 1 to output wave B2 at port 2, this parameter is S21. S21 is the transmission gain or loss measurement, similar to S21. S12 is the wave passed in the opposite direction. So with amplitude and phase information, we can quantify a network's reflection and transmission characteristics. For a two-port network, these four S parameter values can be characterized by a set of equations which is defined as the ratio of the power at the output port to the corresponding input port. This matrix can be expanded into equations, which is useful when calculating the S parameter values. The graph in this slide shows a high-speed multiplexer S11 plot. The plot starts with a big negative value at low frequency, and the value increases as the frequency increases. At 10 GHz, the S11 value is negative 12 dB, which is 25% of the signal power being reflected. This is an ideal performance for a 10 GHz multiplexer. For a good transport network, S11 and S22 will both need to be a large negative value in decibels. A large negative value in decibels indicates small reflected energy. Please note the S11 is equivalent to the S22 for a two-port reciprocal multiplexer. 
What is return loss? The return loss is the reduction in signal power due to the signal reflection caused by impedance mismatch. The return loss can be quantified by reflection coefficients S11 and S22, which is equal to negative 20 log absolute value of S11 and negative 20 log absolute value of S22. The return loss is the difference in dB between the incident power and the reflected power. The larger the negative value of the return loss, the lesser the reflected power. For example, a negative 30 dB return loss is better than a negative 20 dB return loss in terms of the reflective power. The table on the left is a return loss spec in a high-speed multiplexer datasheet. As we can see on the bar chart, the return loss increases as the frequency increases. At the low frequency of 10 MHz, the return loss is only negative 28 dB, but at 5 GHz, the return loss is increased to negative 12 dB. The graph in this slide shows a high-speed multiplexer S21 plot. The S21 plot is almost at 0 dB at low frequency and starts to fall as the frequency increases. At 10 GHz, S21 is negative 1.87 dB, which is state-of-the-art for a 10 GHz multiplexer. S21 is the forward transmission coefficient and S12 is the reverse transmission coefficient. S12 is equivalent to S21 for a two-port reciprocal multiplexer. Insertion loss is the difference in dB between the incident power and the transmitted power. It can be quantified by S parameter S12 and S21, which is equal to negative 20 log absolute value of S12. Ideally, insertion loss should be as low as possible. A high insertion loss can lead to a lower signal to noise ratio and result in lesser system margin. For example, an insertion loss of negative 1 dB is better than negative 2 dB at the same frequency. The table in this slide is the insertion loss spec in a gigahertz multiplexer datasheet. From the bar chart, we can see that the insertion loss increases as the frequency increases. The insertion loss is negative 1.3 dB at 5 GHz, which means 86% of the input power is being transmitted. It will guarantee there is no significant signal degradation when a 10 gigabits per second signal transmits through the multiplexer. Now we have introduced the S parameters concepts and measurement method, let's see how to use the S parameters in a simulation. S parameters is the shared language between the simulation and the actual measurement data. It can be imported into an EDA tool such as ADS Simulator to simulate the real-world circuit behavior. The diagram in this slide shows an ADS simulation setup that is using an S parameter model from an analog multiplexer. The I diagram on the bottom left is the input waveform at 10 gigabits per second. The I diagram on the bottom right is the output waveform after the signal passes through the multiplexer with the insertion loss of negative 1.3 dB at 5 gigahertz. From the wide eye opening of the output result, we can see this multiplexer is a good fit for this system design. S parameter model files can be found at ti.com for each particular multiplexer device. Now let's see how S parameters affect the system performance using an oscilloscope measurement. The picture on the left is a 20 gigabits per second PRBS7 input signal eye diagram. The 20 gigabits per second signal has its Nyquist frequency at 10 gigahertz. Using the TMUX HS4212S21 plot, we can see this multiplexer has an insertion loss of negative 1.87 dB at 10 GHz. A loss of negative 1.87 dB means 81% of the input signal power gets transmitted. The 20 gigabits per second PRBS7 signal has a 600 millivolt vertical eye opening. Due to the multiplexer and PCB insertion loss, the output signal transmitting through the TMUX HS4212 has reduced the vertical eye opening to 420 millivolts, as shown on the right side, which still has plenty of margin for the 100 millivolts USB 3 TXMIN spec. I hope this video has shown the importance of S parameters in characterizing performance and selecting the right multiplexer for your system design. Be sure to visit our E2E support forums at ti.com E2E where we can help answer questions about designing with multiplexer technologies. Please also reference previous TIPL videos on switches and multiplexers, as well as the video on eye diagrams.